Maganda ang gabi sa mga mahal naming manonood. Ang Par Conversations Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape as Inspiration for Literary Expression and Creation ay magsisimula sa ilang sandali lamang. Good evening to our beloved viewers. Par Conversations Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape as an Inspiration for Literary Expression and Creation will begin in a few minutes.
Magandang gabi sa mga mahal naming manunood. Ang Par Conversations Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape as an Inspiration for Literary Expression and Creation ay magsisimula sa ilang sandali lamang. Good evening to our beloved viewers. Par Conversations Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape as an inspiration for literary expression and creation will begin in a few minutes. Good evening everyone, magandang gabi po and welcome to Park Conversations Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape as an inspiration for literary expression and creation brought to you by the National Parks Development Committee and the Department of Tourism. Before we begin our talk, we would like to share a few reminders for all our viewers. 
This Park Conversations webisode is streaming live on our Facebook page, npdc.ph, and will be available on demand after the live discussion. We encourage everyone to share tonight's webinar with your friends on social media and use the hashtag, hashtag Park Conversations. We'd also love to hear from you during the live discussion. Gusto naming marinig ang inyong mga comments at makita ang inyong mga reactions. At kung kayo ay may mga tanong para sa ating speaker, maaari ninyo itong iparating sa amin sa pamamagitan ng Q&A button na matatagpuan sa ibabang bahagi ng inyong screen. At para naman sa ating mga Facebook viewers, maaari ninyong i-comment ang inyong mga katanungan sa live video na ito. Sisikapin namin masagot ang lahat ng inyong mga katanungan sa nakatakdang oras para sa webinar na ito. At panghuli ang mga makakakumpleto lamang sa pagsagot sa ating online survey form ang makakatanggap ng copy ng kanilang digital certificate. Kaya abangan po ninyo sa chat box at comment section ang online survey link na aming ipopost. Please review your entry details, lalong-lalo na po ang inyong mga pangalan before hitting submit button dahil ito po ang aming ilalagay sa inyong digital certificate. And that's it for the reminders. Welcome to the 20th webisode of Park Conversations entitled Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape as Inspiration for Literary Expression and Creation. This special episode was organized by the NPDC to coincide with the observance of the holy month of Ramadan among our Muslim brothers and sisters. Paano nga ba nagiging inspirasyon ang, is ang isang magandang tanawin at espasyo sa pagbuo ng isang makabuluhang likhang literatura? Alamin natin ang lahat ng mga ito kasama si Dr. Calbi Angie Asain. Dr. Asain is a retired Professor 3 and former Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at the Mindanao State University, Sulu. He earned his degree in AB English and graduated summa cum laude at the Notre Dame of Holo College and finished his master's degree and doctor of philosophy degree in Philippine studies from the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Some of Dr. Asain's short stories, essays, and articles were featured in prestigious publications such as Focus Philippines, Weekly Graphic, National Midweek, CCP Ani, NCCA Mantala, Mindanao Life, Adai, Moorings, The Filipino Teacher, Co-op Forum, Inquirer Mindanao, and The Journal of History. In 2003, Dr. Asain received the Raha Baginda Award for Outstanding Tausug in Literature from the Sulu Provincial Government. In 2005, he won first prize in the Tausug Short Story Writing Competition sponsored by the Ateneo de Zamboanga University. At present, our resource speaker is a member of the Executive Council of the National Committee on Historical Research in the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Let's wel welcome our esteemed resource speaker to Park Conversations, Dr. Calbi Angie Asain. Dr. Calbi? Yes. Hello. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Hello. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Ayan, good afternoon po. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Hello? Hello, sir, Angie. Yes, I'm now waiting. Can I start now? Yes, but sir. Okay. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, good evening, our webinarians. Uh, this is Kalbi Asain and and the topic that I'm going to talk about is uh, Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape 
as an inspiration for literary expression and creation. What I am about to share with you is my observation, my experience as a struggling writer in a Muslim space and landscape. Uh, but before I go on, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Musa and her team for inviting me to this webinar. I am immensely honored uh, by this invitation uh, because it is an opportunity for me to share with the uh, audience uh, how uh, Muslim Filipino space and landscape inspire uh, literary expression and creation. But before we go on, let's first Let's first talk about who the Muslim Filipinos are. <clears throat> Actually, in Mindanao, there are 33. All right, so that's the title, uh, Filipino, uh, Muslim Filipino Space and Landscape. All right. Uh, first, let us know who the Muslims are. They actually belong to the 13 cultural communities out of 33 ethno-linguistic groups in Mindanao. The rest are Lumads. Lumads are our indigenous peoples and the, our Christian settlers in Mindanao. <clears throat> the total population of uh, Muslim uh, is approximately three to five million people. The 13, uh, the 13 cultural communities are the following, Bajau, Kagan, Kalibugan, Ilanun, Jamamapun, Magindanaon, Maranao, Molbog, Palawani, Sama, Sangir, Tauso, Ganyakan. So as you can see, uh, Muslim Filipinos are not monolithic. They, uh, they are made up of many groups. So they are pluralistic, and this is a reflection of our national fiber of, 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 of people. Uh, the Muslim Filipinos have complex spaces and landscapes. But here in general, I'm, I'm uh, singularizing it into just Muslim uh, Filipino space and landscape. But in reality, uh, the the space and landscape in uh, Muslim Filipino territories are actually uh, complex. So Muslims speak different languages and they also practice different cultures. So uh, the only binding thread that uh, unites them all is their faith, which is Islam. Next, Next slide. All right, let's now talk about Filipino space and landscape. There are eight Muslim groups uh, that are found in the Bangsa Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or Barm. These are the Bajau, the Ilanon, the Jamamakon, the Mindanaon, uh, Maranao, Sama, Tauso, Ganyakan. The other five groups are in Sambonga Peninsula, Dabao, Palawan, and Sarangani. These are the Kagan, uh, they're, they're also known as Kalagan. Kolibogan, Molbog, Palawan, and Sangir, who are found in Sambonga Peninsula, Dabo, Palawan, and Sarangan, as I said earlier on. Now, despite geographical distances and diverse culture, Islam serves as dominant social linkage, unifying factor for all the Muslims uh, in our country. Next, please. All right, uh, the pictures that you can see are where, uh, are where the Muslim cultural communities can be found. So you can see there the, the uh, map of Mindanao, you can see Sambonga Peninsula. Down there is uh, the province of Basilan, followed by Sulu and Tawi Tawi. Then in mainland Mindanao, you can find Kagan, Kalibugan, Mulbog, Palawan, and Sangir. Uh, the Kagan, I think, are found in Dabo. There's two. I was able to go there once, but I don't know uh, if I can still uh, remember where to go next time because that happened a long time ago. <clears throat> next, please. Okay, so I have shown you the, the maps where we can find the 13 Muslim uh, ethno-linguistic groups in our country. So they're found. Next, please. 
Okay, let's now talk about the landscapes. So if you happen to visit uh, Muslim Mindanao, uh, you can find vast forest covers. Uh, the islands and islets are surrounded with white and pristine beaches. There is also a rubber plantation in Basilan. In Tawi Tawi, you can find, you can find pearls and other sea products. There are several cultural historical landmarks in Sulu and Tawi Tawi and in other parts of the country. I've not been there, so I cannot specify what cultural and historical landmarks that can be found in other areas. But in Sulu and Tawi Tawi, I have been to these two provinces uh, in the first place. I am a native of Sulu, so I'm familiar uh, with the cultural and historical landmarks in the place. Now in Sulu, you have seasonal fruit varieties. That's why Sulu is, is also considered as the California of the Philippines because of the uh, because of many uh, what exotic fruits that are available on season. Um, Muslim landscapes are also made up of fertile land, and there are awesome lakes, as you can find in Lanao del Sur and even in uh, Cotabato. Now, as you all know, Islam preaches environmental preservation and protection. Now, these are the what. Uh, these are uh, mentioned in the Sunnah and Hadith of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, the Sunnah is the Islamic code of uh, custom and practice based on Prophet Muhammad's words and uh, actions. So uh, they are the defining uh, factor in the what in in the behavior of Muslims, whether the behaviors are acceptable or not. The Hadith of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, is an oral report or a narrative report of uh, Prophet Muhammad's words, actions, and approbations together with his, uh, uh, with his uh, men, followers, who are assumed to have known him best. So whatever, the, whatever those followers uh, of him uh, say, uh, they always reflected what Prophet Muhammad said. And uh, in the what? In the... Uh, in the Sunnah and, and, and Hadith, the landscapes or the environment should be taken care of by Muslims. So in Islam, we have three concepts. Uh, the concept of Khalifa or trusteeship. Uh, it means that um, the earth, nature, are entrusted to human beings. And because human beings are considered as viceroys or, or stewards of the earth, they ought to take care of, of the earth and nature. Otherwise, uh, they will be what? Uh, they will be answerable to God. There's also the concept of Tawhid. This is the concept of unity with God. So uh, to, to uh, manifest this is in the harmony between humanity and nature. So there should be harmony and um, and what and uh, some kind of uh, helping each other uh, so that uh, nature and, and, and earth can be preserved. Now, the third concept, which is the concept of Akra, uh, means accountability. Since earth and nature are entrusted to God and entrusted to human beings like us, if we abuse it, overuse it, or overexploit it to the point of destroying it or uh, bring about degradation of our landscapes and environment, then we are held accountable by Allah. And it is what it is, um, it is uh, mentioned in the Quran that those who will uh, commit corruption, corruption in, in all forms, uh, will be what? Will, will be punished uh, in the afterlife. Now, uh, Prophet Muhammad himself uh, exhorted all Muslims to plant trees. Uh, when he was 12 years old, on his way to share with his uncle, they took shelter under a tree. And, there, and, and while under the tree, he realized the importance of, uh, of the tree and what it can do to human beings. So henceforth, he, uh, he, ha he exhorted everyone to plant trees and to take care of the trees, uh, that every sapling that they can have, uh, they should plant, even if it, it means the last day of, of judgment. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay, these are the places. Uh, you can see now the white beach, white beaches uh, surrounding 
uh, surrounding uh, surrounding uh, the island and islets, especially in the provinces of Sulu, Tawi Tawi, and Basilan. Now in mainland Mindanao, of course, they are landlocked, but uh, in uh, in Lanao del Sur, you have the Lanao Lake. The first time I I went there, when I saw it, I thought I was uh, near the ocean. But then somebody laughed at me and said that no, it was not the ocean, it was the famous Lanao Lake. Now, uh, despite the beauty, the you know, the the whiteness of the beach, etc., the plantation, etc., we have this uh, chronic complication, and this is war and volatile lawlessness in some areas. Now, as I will explain later, even the complication can inspire writers to write. And uh, some of the stories that I've written are actually about uh, the complication, the effects of war and, and lawlessness on the lives of the people, especially the Muslims. We'll just talk about that uh, as we go along. So what you can see here are the white beaches. You can also see the provincial capital of Tawi Tawi uh, on, in the middle, uh, second from right. And then the, on the right, on your right, you can see the provincial capital of Sulu. So I hope you can see all these places one day. That is when the pandemic is over and there's no more complication. Next, please. All right, let's, not, uh, let's now talk about literature, space, and landscape in Muslim cultural communities. Now, by literature in my discussion, uh, my focus is on written literature, not, not on oral folk. As you all know, uh, literature uh, uh, includes all forms of writings, but uh, we, you have to remember that there's also what we call as oral literature, which is also part of, the, of literature in general. So in my discussion, I am not going to talk about oral literature because that's not my, my, uh, my, my goal in this discussion. Uh, my emphasis is on creative or imaginative literature, not even on technical and scientific aspects. So when I speak of literature here, I hope, I hope you understand that we mean creative or imaginative literature or what you call literature as an art. Now, so as you all know, of course, you know uh, what I'm going to uh, uh, to say uh, that creative literature or imaginative literature includes poetry, short story, drama, and novel. And sometimes the personal essay is also included as part of the creative imaginative literature, but uh, it does not include technical and scientific literature. Now, in Muslim Mindanao, as I said earlier, there are many languages. So if there are 13 ethno-linguistic groups, it means that we also have 13 uh, languages. And uh, for your information, if Muslims will talk to one another uh, in person, they won't understand one another simply because we are different in our languages. For example, uh, for example, back at Chupi then, uh, one million years ago, uh, my one of my ro my roommate is Samara now. The other one was Ilongo, and the other one was Bisai, I think. And then they were wondering why, uh, why my roommate uh, Mara now and I spoke English or Filipino, not not Muslim language. So we told them that although we are Muslims, but uh, we speak different languages. So the Mara now speaks Mara now, and I speak also because I'm a native of Sulu. So it really depends on when you write, uh, based on my experience, it really depends on your preference. For example, uh, because I am an English major now, I started writing uh, short stories, short stories first, before I, I attempted to write other genre. No? So I started writing in English and my first uh, published short story was written in English. So it was published in 1985 when I was still at the UP pursuing my master's degree uh, and my PhD degree. So the problem with, uh, with the mother tongue is this. When we write in our mother tongue, our readership is limited to our own folks. So if I write in Tausu, those who will read my, my writing will be Tausu like me because others might not understand or, or speak uh, the language. So you can also write in Filipino 
but then I think the Cebuano won't be able to understand you because the Cebuano uh, wants uh, Binisaya as as the language. I mean, that's that's only my personal uh, opinion. So in my case, I started writing in English, and then later on, I realized that I should also write in Fili Filipino. I can speak Filipino well, but uh, uh, I'm not yet, I think, ready to to write a literary piece in Filipino. But I'm gonna try. I uh, that's my plan. Uh, and then, of course. Um, I, I started writing uh, poems in Tausug. As a matter of fact, I have a collection of uh, poems written in Tausug, but they are not yet published. I don't know who will publish them. Uh, I hope uh, somebody out there will be interested uh, to publish it. My friend Ricky de Umbria uh, promised me uh, that he would be helping me uh, in the process, but that depends because he also has many books to publish. So uh, oral and folk literature among Muslim group, groups is, I think, rich and colorful. I think every uh, ethno-linguistic group has, has its own oral or folk literature. But when it comes to written literature, I think it is very much one thing. Why? Because uh, first, uh, we, don't have, we don't have a common uh, linguistic vehicle with which to write. Uh, to write uh, any literary piece. And then uh, Dr. Samuel Tan said in 1975 that the reason why Muslims were not able to uh, write as many uh, written pieces as they could uh, was because they were busy defending their homeland because of the constant war. And then we also have the Jawi, our uh, Muslim writing system, which is called uh, Kirim in, in Maranao, but then uh, the Jawi is, uh, is used for communicating royal, uh, royal activities, royal, uh, royal communications. So uh, there was no way to use Jawi, the Ursulatsug in Tauso, Ursulatsug in, in Tawi Tawi, there's no way to use it as a vehicle for writing creative or imaginative literature. Now, but then um, we, we now have also writers in English, especially so that, uh, that the educated class is rising among uh, Muslim Filipinos. So you can find uh, literary works written by Maranao. You can find literary works written by Tausug, and I'm one of them, although I'm still you know, a nameless and faceless writer, I'm a struggling writer, but I'm trying my best to uh, to write so that we can enrich our written cultural heritage. So as I said, um, my discussion will be on imaginative or creative literature. Uh, we have short story writers in Tausug, in Maranao, in other Muslim groups, but uh, the literary products are still far between, meaning um, we have yet to do a lot of, you know, uh, spend a lot of effort, energy, and, and, and patience to be able to write. Because uh, as you all know, writing is not very lucrative. And I think you agree with me, uh, there's no money in it. So uh, it's sad to say only very few people uh, uh, what uh, venture into uh, literary writing, especially so if you, do, if you don't have publishers, you know? So uh, if, if your work doesn't get, get published, it just gathers dust in your file. So that's the reason why uh, our written literature is one thing, but I hope that other educated Muslims are fan of writing short stories, poems, drama, and novel will, uh, will find time to do it. But of course, they, have, they should have their own uh, livelihood. Uh, but uh, for me, creative writing is just an advocacy, it's, uh, it's, it's something that serves as an outlet for me. And at the same time, uh, I hope I can contribute to the enrichment and enhancement of our written literature. Next, please. All right, let's now uh, let's now be a little specific this time. Let's talk about the space. All right, as I said earlier, uh, there are certain ethno-linguistic groups uh, in the Philippines. So there are, 
uh, basically there are also thirteen social spaces. You know that uh, these are the uh, these are the geographical spaces uh, among Muslim groups. So these are the spaces that they have to cross over uh, to be able to uh, to be able to relate uh, with other Muslim groups. So in my case, as a struggling writer in Muslim social space, whenever I chance upon incidents uh, from which I pick up story ideas for writing stories, I always what I always take note of what I see, uh, especially if uh, if the what if the incidents that I see or encounter are interesting and and they can be good subject matters for liter literary co uh, composition. Now, cultural practices involving marriages and other forms of religions could also inspire me, uh, inspire me to, uh, to write, okay? Uh, for example, um, uh, other, other writers, even among Christian writers, some of them write uh, short stories about relations between a Muslim and non-Muslim. Non so if you are a good writer, you can come up you can come up with a short story about that or perhaps a drama. It depends on your preference. Now, um, the problem with uh, Muslim spaces, we are living in a space ravaged by war. And you know that. Excuse me. Um, I have seen how people lost their loved ones and their homes you know, during the war. I am a living witness to the Seeds Bowl in 1974 and how innocent civilians were displaced and separated from their families. These are things that are that will inspire us to write. Even if the even if the space is ravaged by war, by violence, you can still uh, pick up some ideas with which to write about, uh, whether you're writing a poem writing a short story, drama, or novel. I experienced that myself. I've started writing a novel in Tausu, but I don't know if I can finish it. It's a long way. Uh, a drama, I, I finished one drama in Tausu. It's entitled Sinapang. Sinapang means gun. And it is it is set in, in a community where uh, there is what? There is uh, violence going on, especially uh, in late 1974. Uh, no, early 1974. Now, as we conquer geographical distances in the social space, we encounter situations that fuel our creative process, such as Muslims interacting with non-Muslims or Maranao, with Tauso, etc. All we need to do is to sharpen our senses, note the twist and turn of what we see and hear in the social space. In my case, I always try to find time to sit down and before the, litera, uh, before the literary it dissipates. Whenever I see something that's interesting to me to write about, I, I usually uh, take note of it, but uh, if I get home and I'm not busy, I start writing right away because I easily forget things. Um, so uh, if, if uh, you can write it down as, as the idea strikes you, uh, and then perhaps you can write later. But you should do it as early as possible so that it won't go away. Now, this, uh, these are the short stories and dramas that I wrote about a war rabbit social space. In other words, um, the inspiration need not, be ne need not be positive all the time. It can be negative, but, but uh, it can still inspire you to write. Uh, that, will work. that will give you the idea to write. For example, The Curse, I wrote it in UP Diliman in 1985. This is this is the story about uh, about a girl who who fell in love with a soldier from Luzon. So because this happened in a in a rural area, the girl was disowned by her parents. Her dresses, clothes were burned. So so the girl had to elope with the soldier, and uh, nobody would would. Uh, would solemnize the marriage because in that community, a marriage between a woman, Muslim woman, and a Christian man is prohibited. So uh, the the key character lost her parents, and then during the war, he also lost. She also loses her loved one. So in the end she committed suicide and it's a tragic one. The Return is also a story about 
our rabbit's place. Um, this happened in, a, in an evacuation center. Um, uh, this is a story of an old man, 63 years old. Okay, uh, and then while uh, he was left alone by his relatives because he could no longer evacuate because of his age. So they, uh, he had to stay in a shanty in an evacuation center. And there he found uh, a young boy, uh, age eight or seven, uh, who was also left by the mother who, who had to go to Luzon because he married a soldier. So, uh, and then uh, as the story goes on, the, the mother uh, goes back to the place and looks for her, uh, for her what, for her son. And then uh, the son has to leave the old man behind. So uh, the, the old man has no choice but to leave him beca uh, behind because he feels he's dying, he's sick. Uh, and one night he really passes away. Now, good. Uh, it was. Uh, it is the time that the mother uh, goes back to the place to to fetch the boy. So that ends the uh, the story. Now, in another story, love in a war zone. It's a story. It's also a story about a war rabbit's place. It's a story about a helicopter pilot and an evacuee. Uh, the evacuee loves to look at the helicopter, looks at the pilot. Uh, and one time there is this uh, uh, was the uh, medical mission. Uh, the pilot is the one piloting the, the 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 helicopter, and there they met, and then they fell in love. Okay. So in other words, what I want to then I I also have the choice. This also about uh, brainwashing during uh, uh, during the campaign to join a movement. Sinapang is a drama based on, uh, on, on the gun found by the key character and how he gets attached to it. And then, uh, and then the military uh, went to the area and with their, what, with their detector and then they, they discovered that the Sinapang is with the man and he does not own it. So it was taken, it was taken away from him and he what he he feels very bad about it because the sinapang is also used as a bride price for for her uh, for his uh, for the woman of his choice and so when the sinapang goes away the the fiance also goes away so uh, it 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 it's kind of uh, it's kind of a sad story but then uh, perhaps we can also learn from that experience what. I want to say is that uh, the inspiration need not be positive all the time. It can be negative, but uh, just the same. You can you can write a story, a poem, a drama, or a novel about it. Next, please. Okay, the landscapes. Uh, we are now uh, being more specific. Uh, we are now uh, trying to see uh, specific landscapes in Muslim cultural communities. So as, as I'm saying, um, Muslim communities are not only good as tourist destinations, they're also good as for literary activities. Now, for example, you have Lanao del Sur's foremost landscape, which is Lake Lanao. There are poems about it. Uh, and uh, I have what I have included in my discussion one one poem about Lake Lana, which we will uh, discuss later on. Um, okay, these are the white beaches that I've been talking about, uh, which you can find in the islands and islets of the province of Sulu and Tawi Tawi, and even Basilan. Uh, but you cannot find them in landlocked areas. What you can find in landlocked areas like Lano del Sur and, uh, and perhaps Cotabato are the Lano Lake and the uh, Lake Cebu. Uh, I think they are quite popular. Next, please. Okay, 
So speaking of cultural and historical sites and landmarks, in Sulu you have Budato. The meaning of Budato is uh, mountain of the Dato. Uh, if you recall, in 1876, the Spaniards bombarded Hulu. As a matter of fact, I think the Spaniards had bombarded Hulu over 10 times. I think about 16 times, but that also never surrendered. Okay, uh, if you if if you're able to see the picture on the on the first slide, you have the Mount Tumantangis, that's the highest peak in the province of Sulu. Then to your left uh, on the first slide is Budato. Now Budato is the defense was the defense area during the uh, Spanish time during the war uh, between Sulu and and uh, what and the Spaniards. Now during the American regime. Uh, Buddha too, uh, was almost um, transformed into a park. Uh, I hope the the, the 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 National Parks Committee can can what can help in turning Buddha Datu as a national park in the province. But then uh, the, the pandemic is there, you know, to stop us from doing what whatever we want to do. So Buddha. Is the was the defense area during the Spanish regime. Uh, whenever uh, Holo was bombarded, the Datu, uh, the Datus and their men would retreat to Bud Datu and and uh, prepared their attack on the uh, Spanish fleet and garrison from there. Now we have also Bud Daho. Bud Daho is an extinct volcano. I hope it won't explode one day. Uh, I think it exploded in the 17th century, just like, just like Bud, uh, just like Mount Pinatubo. Oh God forbid, because it's just very near Holo. It's just I think about one kilometer away from the town of Holo. Now, uh, Buddha is a is a historical site because it was on the crater of Buddha that the Tausug natives fought the the Americans who were armed to the teeth. And I think in 1903 or 1906, I can't remember the exact date now, there were about 600 people who perished on, on Buddha because they could not what? Uh, they could not fight the, the, the heavy ammunition of the Americans. Now the war broke out because, um, uh, because of the cedula, cedula law the the Tausugs uh, did not like to follow or to comply with the cedula loose uh, law. So the Americans tried to convince them, but uh, instead of you know surrendering, they fought against the Americans. So about six hundred uh, people died. There were also women who died because women wore clothes like men and also fought the Americans. Now this was criticized heavily by Americans themselves in the USA. Budbagsak is also another historical landmark uh, which became the site of war during the colonial uh, period. Islands and islets are ringed with shining white beaches. Uh, I think they can be compared to Boracay, but the, the only problem is that it's uh, Boracay is a peaceful area. Holo is uh, the the prob uh, Muslim Muslim cultural communities are improving. I think uh, we will we will be surprised one day that they will become uh, the most peaceful areas in the country, so that you can go, so that you can freely go there without fearing for your lives. Uh, and then, of course, as I said early on, uh, Sulu is considered as as the California of the Philippines because of its seasonal variety of exotic fruits, as lansones, durian, marang. Dorian, uh, I am proud to say, are more delicious than durians in the bow, because durian in Sulu are, uh, uh, they usually grow by themselves. They are not cultured or, or, or uh, intentionally planted by planters. And they, they grow in uh, the fertile land of Sulu. So they're what? They're, they're, they are very delicious. And even Nantausu who would, who would not like to eat durian the first time they smell it or they taste it, usually go crazy after eating uh, eating durian for some time. So in the picture, you can see uh, uh, to your left, the first picture there is the, uh, are the two towers built during 
the American period. I think they were first built during the Spanish period, but they were renovated during the American period because uh, the date was 1925 or something. So that was already during the time of the uh, American. The picture below is a, called, is a religious landmark. That's the Grand Mosque in Tulay Holosulu. Uh, when you go by plane, you can see it right away from the air. And then below is the what is the threshold of the Sulu provincial capital. Now, to your right, uh, you can see the woman there. Uh, it's actually a picture taken on Bud Datu, uh, a few kilometers away from the town of Holo. From Bud Datu, you can see the the city, the the town of Holo, uh, from you know from the hut there. It's a woman watching uh, the town of Holo over there. So. Um, in other words, uh, everything there, if you are a writer, you can use as your inspiration for writing something. All right, this is the Kesson's Beats. I don't know. I think the, this, this is comparable to Boracay. But the problem with Kesson's Beats is it is located in Patikul. And of course, Patikul is very popular. Huh? It's very popular to everyone, especially in the news. Uh, next, please. All right, so, all right, so here are the pictures of the durians. So these are native to Sulu and they are very delicious. They are even considered as aphrodisiacs. So you can write a short story about it. Uh, perhaps a man uh, eating uh, two months of durian that he what that uh, instead of be instead of it being an apodisia, it causes his uh, his disappearance or his <laughs> death. You know, it depends on uh, where do you want the story uh, might end. Then below it, next please. All right, that's mangosteen. All right, these are also what uh, these are also favorite fruits in Sulu, and I think they're quite expensive, especially in Sambuanga. And then down below is a picture of, of rambutan. I think they're common also in other places. Rambutan is called, they're called usaw in Tausug. Uh, we also love rambutan. And then of course, the the constant favorite, not only in Sulu, but also uh, to visitors, the famous Lanzones. They're bigger than, than the Lanzones in Camigin, for example. So they can be sweet, they can also be sour. You can choose your own uh, taste if you, if you eat Lanzones. But there are very, very sweet Lanzones that, that can be what? That can be picked in the rural area. Next, uh, next please. Okay, Tawi Tawi is the most important religious site in the country. Why? Because the first mosque was built on one of its famous islands, Simonol. Have you ever been to Simonol? I have not been there, but I hope to get there one day. In addition, it is surrounded with white beaches, abundant pearls, several kinds of fish, and other sea products. There are many lobsters there. My God, do you love lo lobsters? If you don't have, uh, you can eat as many lobsters as you want if you, if you are not allergic to them. So on Bud Bungao was buried Sheikh Makdum. Sheikh Makdum, actually Makdum is a, is a religious title, but then uh, in the province of Tawite and Sulu, it has become a name. So one Makdum, I think, was buried on Bud Bungao. Bud Bungao, when you're in Bungao, you can see this wood. It looks very, uh, uh, it looks very what? It, it looks very, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but when you see it, there's something in it that, that will scare you. Okay, so the religion, uh, it was Sheikh Makdum who introduced um, really uh, the Islamic religion in the Philippines, one of the Makdumin. Makdum is the plural form of Makdum. And it was also he who made possible the construction of the first. Uh, of the first Muslim mosque in the country. And this is the renovated first mosque in the Philippines. Uh, before renovation, this looked like a Nipah 
its its roof was nipasats uh leaves okay uh, but then now it looks very uh, uh very pompous uh, according to one of the stories told by uh living witnesses uh, as far as the first was concerned when when the old mosque was demolished uh, the center post was left behind and then when it was uprooted uh so somewhat some spurts splash of water went out of it all of a sudden the people were scared uh, of it so they thought that it was the what it was the it was the strength of Sheikh Makdum, you know. Uh, perhaps he didn't want uh, his first most uh, demolished. Next, please. Uh, okay, so this is another example of, of the beach in Tawi Tawi, I think. It's very pristine, uh, very clear, very clean. You want to swim uh, uh, if you see it to dive into it and enjoy the, the the freshness of the water next please okay now this is what you call good bungao uh when you are in bungao bungao is the capital of tawi tawi province so the moment you get there you always see this one so this is a mountain that that inspires one short story that i wrote it's titled the sacred mountain uh, okay, uh, uh, the, the key character, next please, the, the, the words below. Uh, the key character uh, here is a, sopho, is a sophomore student, all right, studied the Sacred Mountain. Now there is one prohibition here. So the purpose, perhaps the goal of my writing uh, this year's story is precisely because I want to protect uh, nature, I want to protect the environment, I want to protect the the native landscape of the people. So uh, it just came out in my story that it's being sacred uh, protects it from, from destroyers, from vandals. You know? So uh, Sacred Mountain was published by Weekly Graphic. Um, the, the sophomore student violates the prohibition, the prohibition that you cannot take picture of it. Otherwise, you will suffer the consequences. And the sober student suffers the consequence. Uh, he did not follow the violation because he, he loves uh, photography. So he took picture of the mountain. And as a consequence of that, because of that violation, he loses all the snapshots of the mountain other photos he took while attending a leadership seminar in the province. So that's a consequence of you know trying to interfere with nature. Uh, I don't know if you have read that, and I doubt also if some uh, Sama, Sama are the natives of Tawi Tawi, if some of them have read that short story. But what inspires me to write that is the landscape. I mean, it's, it's quite what, I mean, uh, it's quite scary to look at it, but at the same time, it's part of nature and, uh, and it's just, I know, it looks like the head of the boat is running low. Excuse me. Okay, uh, let's go on now. Uh, can we move on to the next one? Next, please. Okay, now let's take a look at the passes below uh, because I think my time is uh, almost over. Let's take a look at the passes below. An excerpt from a poem on Lake Lanao by Yulehia Royer, uh, Royera Salimama, titled An, El An Elegy for Lake Lanao. Uh, this is what the, this uh, poem was submitted to the uh, MSU Iligan Writers Workshop. Now, in this what in this uh, in this poem, she bewails the state of the famous lake right now. So let me just read to you. The whole poem is a short poem. It's just part of the poem. The fisherman song softly, slowly, silently into the vastness of the sea. There is nothing now of the lake. When before trees hummed and birds sang love songs for the lake, now, deaf to the humming of the trees, the still lake cannot hear the songs of birds. The lake whirling, screaming, stumbling. 
will forever be listening to her melody of pain. So this is uh, this is our this is a literary rendition of the state of Lano Lake, and of course it's a sad rendition because uh, the author uh, feels the impact of uh, the lake, uh, you know, uh, disappearing uh, if if we cannot control uh, the the what the if we cannot control. Uh, it's degradation. No? So it's a beautiful lake. The first time I was there, I thought I was near the ocean. It was on top of a mountain. It looks very spectacular. We should preserve Lanao Lake uh, at all costs. So another poem titled, Poem for What Remains of a Rainforest by Jim Augustine Pasquale. He summarizes dismay over a vanishing forest in his poem last line. Uh, please, all right, that's the law. Oh, if you read it, it, it could not even command rain, meaning the rainforests are disappearing and there's almost nothing left because it can no longer command rain. So that's how uh, literary people uh, express their feelings uh, by uh, creating uh, a literary piece uh, about about landscape. Uh, so those are experiences in uh, Muslim cultural communities. Next, please. All right. Uh, so now the, here are my conclusive remarks. As a struggling writer in Muslim space and landscape, what I see and observe become the raw materials for my literary production. I now consider writing as a personal advocacy. So uh, I am uh, saying that the space in Muslim uh, territories and the, and the landscapes there can truly inspire writers uh, to write uh, short stories, poems, dramas, and novels, and hopefully through that they can enrich their lit uh, written literary heritage. I believe that Muslim space and landscape should be viewed not only in the context of recreation, and tourism, but also in terms of their contribution to literary creativity and productivity. And number three, uh, uh, part of my conclusion, I now therefore encourage young Muslim Filipinos to write and continue to do so in order to enrich their written literary heritage, because that's what we lack. And I hope that uh, whatever uh, written literary uh, pieces that the Muslims will be able to write will become part of the National Filipino Written Literary Heritage. Wassalam. Next, please. All right, uh, that's about it. Thank you very much for your attention and for listening. We can now have the open forum. Hello po, Dr. Asain. Um, Dr. Yes, can you yes. please turn on your camera po para makita kayo na ating mga viewers? Uh, okay, okay. I'm still in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> can you see me now? Um, hindi pa po. Ay. Ay. Ay, hindi pa. Opo. Somebody <laughs> hindi pa po. Me. Somebody's helping me because I am an illiterate as far as uh, computer operation is concerned. Sandali po, ha? You cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. So, ikaw nag-stop. <laughs> oh, okay po. Sige, sandali lang po. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Hindi raw ma-open ang video. Ito po, sir. Ayan. Ayan. Can you see me now? Okay, yes okay. po. Hello po, Dr. Asain. Ayan. Hello. Welcome Hello. po to Park Conversations. Ma yes Ma po. Apo, uh, may and okay. po. Ayan. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, please uh, I extend my gratitude to Miss Musa for inviting me today and the team and the whole team. Yes po. Okay. And PDC is also honored po to have you here, um, Dr. Asain. So, um, napakarami po namin, 
natutunan ngayong gabi sir ano po hindi lang kami natuto pero nakita rin namin kung gaano kaganda yung yung Mindanao yung buong hmm. south and um sana uh, sabi niyo nga po pag nag-end na tong pandemic sana makabisita rin kami and you mentioned about the foods yung lansones yung durian uh, and yung marang uh, nako excited na po yes. kami matikman lahat yan uh, and, sana matapos um, ang pandemic Opo, and of course, yung pinaka-favorite ko dito, ano po, nung in-state nyo, inisa-isa ninyo yung mga um, isinulat ninyo, yung mga um, short stories and poems. Yes. Um, yung, kumbaga, even dun sa worst place or worst situation, there can come a beautiful story out of it. Katulad Sorry. nung sa Love in War Zone. Parang gusto ko siyang hanapin tuloy ngayon sa internet. Nasa I hope it's available. Siya. Nasa Wattpad siya, Miss Marian. Oh, so, okay, yeah, nahanapin mga, ko po yan. Oh, maraming, maraming mga grammatical errors doon kasi hindi ko na-edit. Diretso yun eh. Nasa Wattpad, yung love in a war zone. Mm. Yes, I'm yes. excited ako mabasa yan kasi it's a love story. Alam mo naman po, pag babae, medyo mahilig sa love story. Ayan, pero yung, kumbaga yung okay. conflict... Now war and then there's love a love story going on so very interesting po ano and um ayan oh. gusto ko rin yung story na sinight niyo about the budbunga o or budbungaw budbungaw bungaw bungaw, oh, bungaw. ayan yung budbungaw hmm. gusto gusto ko rin po yung story na um sinulat niyo tungkol doon ano it's all about protecting syempre yung environment yung yes. pagiging oh. sacred ng mountain gustong gusto ko yung story yes. nan i hope also mahanap ko rin po sana yung sa internet to read about it oh, but nasa, nasa google <laughs> Opo, sir oh, okay. um so may mga questions po tayo ano na babasahin and See, um go ahead. We'll answer. We'll try to answer it. Po, sandali lang po. Sige lang. Apa. So, one question. Ayan, medyo natatagalan lang po ano yung pagload ng question. No problem. I can wait. Ayan. Um, one question po is paano po nakakaapek to yung environment sa pagsulat ng isang kwento or ng isang tula or any literary oh. um, form in oh, your experience ay maganda. Uh, in my experience hindi naman siya nakakaapekto ah uh, pero na lang kung halimbawa may ano diyan may lindol diyan ano na kasi doon mo doon mo na pick up yung mga ideas mo kung ano ang nangyayari sa environment. So hindi ko alam kung ano kung ano yung gusto niyang ano tumbukin sa nakakaapekto ba. Para sa akin, nakaka-inspire nga sa pagsusulat yung uh, yung ano, yung kapaligiran. At marami kang makikitang uh, mga ideas na pwede mong gawing tula, pwede mong gawing uh, may kling kwento o drama o kaya nobela. Ah, uh, uh, katulad ng sinabi ko, ang inspiration hindi kailangan positi ay hindi kailangan positibo pwede ring negatibo uh, at kung ma, uh, magaling yung manunulat uh, mapwede niyang gawing artistic yung pagkagawa niya uh, so ang environment ay nakakabigay inspirasyon sa mga mas as far as i am concerned <laughs> kasi parati akong tumitingin sa mga sa mga palipaligid kumbaga it's a matter of kung paano mo tinitingnan yung environment mo po ano yung yung environment or yung situation. Oh, oh. Tapos kung paano mo tahihin yun kasi ang story naman ay invento, di ba? Pero mas kina invented diyan, nakabase yan sa mga nakikita mo sa paligid. Mm. Okay, so maganda ang epekto sa, sa writer. Ayan. So next question mm. po, may nasulat yeah. po ba kayo this pandemic? Any literature produced that inspired by the pandemic? Wala pa. Wala pa. Uh, uh, nag, ano, nagtitingin-tingin ako sa paligid kung paano ako makasagip ng, ano, ng ideya para makasulat ako ng isang tulaman o kaya ano. Uh, pero ang mahirap doon, naka-lockdown ka, hindi ka pwedeng lumabas-labas, di ba? Lalo na pag mga kaming mga may edad na, hindi na 
parang limitado na yung ano. Pero uh, siguro pwede kang, pwede, pwede kang sumulat ng isang istorya sa pagiging lockdown ng isang tao, di ba? So, wow. Pero ang ano doon, uh, pagtayin mo yung, ano, yung mga pangyayari para makabuo ka ng isang short story. Diba? Kasi ang isang short story, di ba, buhay din yon Interpretation mo ng buhay ng, ng, ano, ng mga nasa loob ng ano, yung mga characters doon. Opo. Hindi pa. Hindi pa ako nakasulat. That's a good idea. I might write one soon. Okay po. Ayan po. So, next question. Thank you for the question. Sige. Mm-hmm. Next question po, sir. Sino po ang inyong iniidolo na mga manunulat? Ano po ang nagustuhan ninyo po sa estilo nila ng pagsulat? Saan? Dito sa atin? Sa Pilipinas o sa abroad? Siyempre ah, po, unahin sa... uh, po, unahin muna natin ah, sa Pilipinas. Ko, uh, <laughs> sa Pilipinas, parang gusto ko siya, no? parang gusto ko si Nick Joaquin. Kasi mahilig siya sa mga sa mga istorya na nakakagulat. <laughs> mga ganun. May, medyo mahilig din ako yung mga ganun. Kasi mga Sacred Mountain. Akala ko ngayon, di ba publish yung Sacred Mountain ng graphics? Siya yung ano nun. Dati siya yung parang editor yata dun. Nung mapublish yun. So, siguro na publish yun dahil sa yung may konting kababalagan doon sa, yes. sa Sacred Mountain. Di ba? Uh, yung mga Doña Hieronima na sinulat niya. So dapat dapat naman talaga yung iiduluhin natin yung sariling atin. So katulad ng sinabi ko sa isang webinar dito na naimbita din na ako. Alin ba sabi ko yung mga sinulat ko may bumasabang mga tauso. Uh, may mga estudyante na bumasa mga letters kasi di ba uh, maskin sa pag sa pagbabasa may may colonial mentality tayo pag foreign authors ang binabasa natin magaling daw tayo di ba bakit tayo kasi foreign authors. pero pag yung binabasa natin local writers parang masa di ba bakya kung parang hindi ba ano so anyway speaking of foreign writers gusto ko si ano si Hemingway Ernest Hemingway kasi simple siyang sumulat classic so, Sara si Faulkner ganyan. <laughs> Pero dapat ibahin ko na sa sa edad ko to dapat sariling atin na dapat yung ano yung pagtunan natin ng pasing. Kadulad dito sa Muslim Mindanao, nag-encourage ako sa mga batang Muslim na sumulat kasi kailangan talaga ma-enrich namin yung aming written literary heritage. Kasi yung oral folk literature namin talagang maganda. Kulang talaga kami sa written uh, written culture heritage kasi walang nagsusulat. Pero ngayon may mga educated class na na ano na uh, ano yumayabong so sumusulat na rin sila. Especially so na ginagamit na natin yung modern alphabet, yung uh, yung ano yung uh, modern alphabet na. Di ba it was introduced by Frank Lubak in 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 Dansalan uh, in the 1930s. So uh, since then, parang gumamit na ng uh, English alphabet yung mga, yung mga nakapag-aral ng Muslim. So I hope marami na ang susulat. Sa, pero sa mga sumusulat ngayon ng, ng, ano, ng literary pieces na creative ay yung mga major groups pa. Na marami nang nakapag-aral. Tulad ng Maranao, Maguindanao, Tausug, Sama, uh, and I think Ilanon. Yung minor groups, wala pa eh. Kasi kawawa naman sila. Yung mga especially yung nasa liblib. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Hindi sila nakapag-aral. Yung kami lang na medyo nakapag-aral na yung sumusulat. Pero yung yung oral literature ng mga, ng mga hindi pa na, yung hindi kasama sa major groups, maganda rin. Kaya lang dapat i-collect mo yun. Hanapin mo. Mm-hmm. Actually, sir, Thank you no, sa ginagawa niyo pong parang advocacy na yan na pag-encourage ng mga kabataang um, tausog para po... Para dumami kami, di ba? Na sumusulat. Hindi kita marinig, nag-stop ka dyan. <laughs> mas ma... Mas ma... Mas marinig at mas mabasa pa po ng marami sa atin. Oh. Oh, actually, ako mayroon akong isang collection of short stories pero nasa English sinulat. It was published in 2001 by by the De La Salle University Press. Pero nasa... Oh. 
Ano po ang title noon, sir, para po sa, for the benefit of our viewers, kung meron pong interested oh. and me, med, interested din po akong malaman ko ano po yung title po nung oh. ano good, na yan. Panunggod and other stories. Panunggod? Panunggod. Oh, kung gusto nilang makita lahat, nasa Google naman, ang pa- pangalan ko lang ang ano yun. Calvia Sain, tapos... I-Google. Uh, tapos andun lahat yung mga sinulat namin. Ewan ko kung sino naglagay doon. Nagulat nga ako nung makita ko yung pangalan ko doon. <laughs> Nasa yeah. Google yan. Google yun. No? Google, oh. Nasa Google yun. So nandun yung title ng first collection ko. May second collection ako ngayon. Tapos na pero hindi ko alam kung sino ang gusto mag-publish. Naghahanap pa ako ng mga makatulong sa akin. Yung first ano ko, may tumulong sa akin na national writer. So... So, nag-publish siya kasi tinulungan niya. Kung si, kilala mo si Dr. Dariada, uh, famous writer, wala na siya. So, tinulungan niya talaga akong publisher. Sabi niya, i-compile mo. Akong bala, maghanap ako ng publisher sa iyo. So, talagang ginawa niya at na-publish yun in 2001. Ayan. Sana po ano, sana makahanap tayo nung magpa-publish nung pangalawa niyo pong ginawa para, para syempre so, mabasa po nung marami. Yun na nga ang problema, Miss Mary Ann, yung readership natin, kulang na kulang. Sana uh, wala tayong mga bestseller. Yung mga... <laughs> Pero ako naman sa pagsusulat din naman, pera yung hanap ko. Yung ano, yung alam mo, makatulong sa pagpayabong ng ano, ng written uh, literary heritage ng aming, ano, ng aming group as part of the national uh, literary heritage. Ayan, um, so sir, kasi medyo naglalak na po tayo ng time, ano, medyo naubos na tayo ng oras. So, um, uh, any final words po para sa ating mga aspire, aspiring writers na nanonood ngayon uh, at sa ibang pa po mga uh, kababayan ninyo po dyan sa Mindanao? Alright, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the, the National Parks Committee for inviting me to this webinar. I am immensely honored by your invitation. Uh, I would like to encourage our people, especially uh, the young ones in uh, Muslim cultural communities in all the 13 ethno-linguistic communities to write uh, because uh, it is one way of uh, uh, establishing our identity as a people. Uh, but of course, uh, we should not forget that we are part and parcel of the larger uh, Filipino race. And our diversity is just a reflection of national diversity. So I hope that more Muslims will write uh, creative, uh, creatively or uh, uh, imaginatively. So I'm referring to creative imaginative literature so that this will become part and parcel of the national creative literature. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ayan. Thank you so much po ulit, Dr. Asain, for joining us tonight and sharing with us the beautiful views and landscapes as well as the literary culture of the South. Truly, we Filipinos have a very rich and diverse history and heritage. We'd also love to thank our viewers on Zoom and Facebook Ayan. for joining us and helping this Make this Park Conversations webisode a success. Please remember to check your chat box and the comment section on our Facebook Live video for the link to your digital certificate as well as a quick survey, which will help us at the National Parks Development Committee improve the quality of our shows and projects. If you enjoyed tonight's Park Conversations, do follow us on our social media accounts to stay connected and updated with the other fun events we have lined up for this month. For Facebook and Instagram, it's npdc.ph. And for Twitter, it's npdc underscore ph. Again, thank you, everyone. And see you at our next Park Conversations.